Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to your holy name, Lord. You are worthy to be praised and glorified. There is none like you in all the earth. And I just bless your holy name. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Worthy is the Lamb to receive glory and honor and power and majesty and blessings. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy. You are the great I am. You are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth me. You are Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner. And your banner over us is love. El Elyon is your name. The supreme being. Y-H-W-H Yahweh. You are holy and just in all your ways. The Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
You are God, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. And I just bless you this evening. I bless your holy name, Lord. I glorify and magnify you. You are great and greatly to be praised. You are sovereign. And we bless you this evening, Lord, and say, have your way. Greetings in Christ the Lord. This is your Master Apostle Reddick, Chief Apostle and Executive Pastor of Converting Souls Apostolic Ministries. I am also the spiritual mother and head Holy Ghost Fountain overseer and apostle and tonight is Thursday and I usually do Holy Ghost supplication on Fridays but I'm doing this for a specific purpose uh, and so I I pray that you join me in Holy Ghost Supplication. And so if you open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word today. We thank you for your love that is a banner over us. And his name is Jesus Christ. Born in Bethlehem, Ephrata. And just like Bethlehem was fruitful. So is Christ's knowledge in us fruitful as we walk and live according to his commands. And he said, if we love him in return, we will keep his commandments, even as he loved the Father and keep his commandments. So, Father, as I yield my vessel to your spirit, I say, have your way. Holy Spirit, Release your fountain through me. Manifest yourself. That Jesus may be lifted up and God glorified. That many will come into eternal life. So Father, have your way. Lord Jesus, have your way and be glorified. For you are holy and righteous in all your ways. You are the author of eternal salvation. You are the author and finisher of our faith, and we bless your name. You are the branch, the first apostle and high priest of our profession. You are the Son of God. You are the mighty God. And we thank you and we bless you. We praise your holy name this evening. And we glorify you, Lord, and have your way as as
as the sermon go forth. by Chief Apostle Reddick in Christ Authority. Amen and amen. This is Holy Ghost Supplication. And I want you to understand Holy Ghost Tongues Power Edification Prayer is something that I have been teaching on since last March. Last year in June when I was in um, Virginia, I taught on this from Virginia. And so each week, we have Holy Ghost Tongues Power Edification Prayer Sessions. And so tonight is on a Thursday. We're just going to have one session. And tomorrow, hopefully, the second session. 1 Corinthians 14, 2, verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks not to un, not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him, howbeit in the spirit he speaks mysteries. No man understand him. That means no man hear him. What is going into the person's ear that is hearing, it is unfruitful because the mind cannot conceive what the person is uttering. Zayere we zizi ki zian zayere didizia krase krianda hakra yesi kriasa yere didizia. I uttered in the spirit, but yet you may be questioning what is she saying? If you are already a saint and believer and know about Holy Ghost tongues, you are going to understand that the Holy Spirit just manifested itself and showed the gift. Of speaking in tongues. I want you to understand this. Now, although 1 Corinthians 14 is about speaking in tongues, but yet prophesying, both have its proper place. But we're pointing out why Holy Ghost tongues power edification prayer is important in a believer's life. And yes, there is always controversy and some discrepancies and some don't believe the same, but we must do what Christ said to do. He says his understanding, what he hears is unfruitful. For in the spirit he speaks in mysteries. And so we must understand that the gift of tongues, when the Holy Spirit is uttering, it is a mystery. Romans eight twenty six. Romans 8, 26. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, 
but the spirit. And in my Bible, spirit is capitalized. So you must understand he's talking about the Holy Ghost, the spirit of the living God inside of us. He maketh intercession. He intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And so we must understand. Let me finish 27. Oh. 26. I, I kind of mixed them. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now he says he maketh groanings that cannot be uttered. These groanings is what I just did to you. This utterance, the utterances, the groanings of the Spirit. Now some speak in tongues like that, but you may know groanings like this. The spiritual mothers of the church and fathers, there's a groaning when the Spirit is moving. But here it says, which cannot be uttered. And so when the Holy Ghost begins to pray for you because of your infirmity of prayer, that means because of your sickness of prayer, that means you don't know how to pray or what to pray. And so the Holy Spirit is leading you by his utterance for you. And so what do you, you mean? He that speaketh in an unknown tongue. This is a tongue that he didn't learn on his own. This is a tongue that only the, the Spirit of God can give you. Now, this utterance, this, this, this intercession in Holy Ghost tongues... Why, why must we speak in the gift? Uh, why must God give you the spirit of grace for faith for the gift of tongues? It is important for you and me. And one thing is because we have an infirmity in prayer. I need you to write that down. We have an infirmity in prayer. Now, the saints, according to God, he prays according to God. See, the Spirit of God knoweth the mind of God. So then when we utter, because he's uttering through us, we, he begins to pray the will of God for us in our infirmed state. Why else is speaking in tongues an important key for us as believers, especially the matured saints? Uh, the mature saints are the saints that are perfected. Uh, they need meat and not only milk. Uh, see, milk is for those that, that are um, in the first principles. Uh, milk is for those uh, that uh, are not... Um, uh, they are not, let's go to Hebrews, because I want to give you the right word. They are not skillful in the word of God. I want you to write this down, Hebrews, the fifth chapter, 13 and 14, and chapter 6, verse 1. They are not skillful in the word of righteousness because they are babes. 
But those of us that are perfected have been baptized in the spirit and can speak in tongues. We need strong meat. And the strong meat belonging to those that are of full age. That's why sometimes when a pastor is preaching, it goes over your head or you lack understanding. The, the teaching is too meaty for you at that time because you are a babe and you are unskillful and you don't understand biblical revelation. So we must understand that strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You know, discerning is another gift of the Spirit found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, which we will maybe get to. But we must understand that the spirit of discernment, when the Holy Ghost begins to move through the gifts, uh, this is supposed to be a matured person, one that has been perfected to a place where they need a certain level of teaching, a certain level of preaching. Because only on this level where there's strong meat for those that are a full age, they got to be fed that same level of understanding. And if they're not fed it, they exercise it. They feed it to others. Now, in verse 6, 1, it talks about going back to the first principles. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Let us go on unto maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. You don't want your faith to die out. You don't want dead works. If your faith dies out, then you, you're losing grace. God gave you the spirit of grace for faith in Jesus Christ. And so therefore, if your faith die out, you lose grace. Now, with that understanding, let's go to Luke. the 22nd chapter so I want you to understand the spiritual gifts they're usually on those that get converted and God is perfecting I want you to understand that I teach you in spiritual development that in you have the babe stage, then you have the child stage or the children's stage. That's like teens and young adults. So this particular stage, the, you are normally baptized in the spirit. But it's when you become an adult, a son. See, you can be a son as a babe, you can be a son as a child, but when you are a son as an adult, it's considered full age. But I, I was just teaching you about your faith. Going back to the first principles, you lose your faith. In hardship, the Lord Jesus tells us, shows us that sifting of Satan can cause it. You lose your faith towards God and um, dead works. You go back into dead works. Let's go Luke twenty two thirty one, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. You ever been using flour in a sifter? Some you do wind. 
and the flower grinds and goes through these holes. Some you can just shake. And they fall through, the, the flower is sifted and fall through the holes. But he says, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. See what prayer does? Now we're talking about Holy Ghost supplication, Holy Ghost tongues, power edification prayer. He said, I have prayed for you. This is Jesus' prayer for Peter. Now this prayer in the Bible for Peter is for the rest of us. He said, I left you an example and we that are of full age must follow the example of Christ and we must pray that your faith fell not in the sifting of Satan. The sifting of Satan is the hour for the power of darkness in your life. It's the hardship. It's the pots. And when you are converted, strengthen thy brethren. So what does Holy Ghost tongues, power, edification, prayer do? It help you strengthen your brethren. Why? Because at that point you've been converted. Well, well, I thought I was converted as a believer, just believing. No, you've got salvation, eternal life. Uh, but when you are baptized in the Spirit, then you have been converted. This is not water baptism. This is spiritual baptism. The Bible says we must be born again by water and by spirit. By water is the washing of the water by the word of God. And by spirit is the spirit of God. When Christ baptized you and you begin to walk in his gifts. Zikaye zizi wi ziyan zaye didi ziyan. Zaye zizi ki ziyan zaye we ziki. The gifts of the Spirit, now some try to fool others. Because there are tongues of the Holy Ghost and tongues of Satan, the fallen angels. But God says... In 1 Corinthians 13, 1, the Apostle Peter, he says, the, I mean, the Apostle Paul, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have, and of angels, that's part A. So we understand that being converted and speaking in Holy Ghost tongues, we can speak in the dialect of different Diverse men and women, diverse languages, diverse tongues. That's the gift of tongues found in 1 Corinthians 12. And then in 1 Corinthians, um, he says we speak in the language of men and we speak in the language of angels. First Corinthians 14, first Corinthians 12. First Corinthians 12. Verse 10, uh, okay, verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Verse 10, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. But all these work 
that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. We must understand 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 7, 10, and 11. It tells us that it profits every man. And it is the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the administrator. And so he told Peter, when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. So I want you to write down another thing that Holy Ghost tongues, power, edification, prayer will do. It will help you strengthen your brothers and sisters in Christ. So it helps your infirmities in prayer. It helps your brothers and sisters in Christ to be converted. To be strengthened in the spirit. It helps your brothers and sisters in Christ not to lose their faith. Not to lose their faith. Psalms 8-2 tells us that out of the, babes, the mouths of babes and sucklings that God has ordained strength. And so he shows us that in com being converted... We strengthen our brother and sister, number one, by praying for them in Holy Ghost tongues. And in praying and having ordained strength, the Bible says you might that you were still the enemy and the avenger. So I want you to understand that in, in understanding Holy Ghost supplication, Holy Ghost tongues, power, edification, prayer, there are, this is why it's important to pray in your Holy Ghost tongues. I want you to write these scriptures down. Another reason found in 1 Corinthians 14, 4, is that your spirit is edified. When you speak in Holy Ghost tongues, you are edifying your spirit. You are built up by the Holy Spirit. I need you to write this down. Ephesians 6, 18. It's a part of your spiritual warfare. Psalms 8, 2, that you might steal the, uh, the enemy and the avenger. It's part of your spiritual armor so that you would be strengthened and be able to move in spiritual warfare. Ephesians 16, 6, 18. Ephesians 6, 18. You pray with all prayers, supplication in the spirit. Being converted, being baptized in the Holy Ghost and having the spirit of grace for different gifts. So now, these are important for you to write down why it's important to speak in Holy Ghost tongues. Now, what? why else is it important? Because... The Bible tells us these things, but the, write these scriptures down. 1 Corinthians 14, 16. It says, we bless God with the Spirit, and we give thanks in tongues. Hallelujah. 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 And me saying hallelujah, I'm speaking in another language. Did you know that? In the English language, it means praise God. Praise Yah. It's the same thing as saying praise God. It also means praise the Lord. Because hallelujah means praise. But J-A-H means Yah. Hallelujah. And we find that in the book of Psalms, that's the only place his name is called Yah, in which he rides the clouds by his name. 
And we, we say hallelujah with the J-A-H. We are saying praise God, praise Yah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now when I go, when I go, when I use the diverse tongues, then we must understand what one is saying in the spirit. We, when we speak in tongues, sometimes our our, our understanding is unfruitful, but we are allowing the Spirit to speak through us. And so if you want a fruitful understanding, getting into the Spirit, you can search out your tongues. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not sure what language I speak. Some, um, one language, is a broken Creole language. The other languages I have to look up. There are times when I'm deep in Holy Ghost tongues, I begin to speak in, an, in a Native American Indian language, especially if I'm in a warfare mode. Acts, the 10th chapter, the 44th and the 46th verse says that when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you magnify God speaking in tongues. You magnify God with the Spirit. Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, uh, when Peter was converted, uh, the Bible says that the men who heard them speaking in tongues in their language said they spoke the wonderful works of God. And so we must understand the importance of Holy Ghost tongues, power edification prayer. Make sure you have a prayer hour at your church. Uh, you attend it. Most of the time it's intercession and supplication in your own English language or whatever language that you speak at your church. But hopefully there's an hour where you can release and you there's spiritual edification and spiritual strengthening. And so we understand the different reasons why we go into Holy Ghost tongues powerful power edification prayer we speak the wonderful works of god we magnify god with the spirit we bless god and give thanks to him so in 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 acts 2 verse 4 and 11 or 9 through 11 acts 10 44 through 46 first corinthians 14 16 through 17 tell us we we just bless god we give them praise. And by doing so, we are strengthening our own spirit. And then the Holy Ghost is interceding for us. He is helping our infirmity of spirit. It is also a spiritual warfare. Ephesians 6, 18, Psalms 8, 2, which also leads us into understanding that Jesus Christ did the same in Luke 22, 31 to 32. I want you to understand how important it is to go into Holy Ghost tongues, powerful power edification prayer. And this teaching has been 40 minutes. But if you got a minute to stand and raise your hands... And just speak in your heavenly language. Zayere way, ziziki zian zayere didizia. Krase krianda hakra yesi kria zayere didizia. And if you don't have a Holy Ghost language, you can say hallelujah. You can say praise God in your regular language uh, until you receive the gift of Holy Ghost tongues, the baptism of the Spirit. There's a season and an hour that is here. That God wants to blow on his people. 
And he wants to tell you to receive his spirit. And normally after that is done, there is time, but you receive the Holy Ghost. It happened with the apostles. So don't think that if you don't have it yet, it's not going to happen for you. When God gives an apostle, a bishop, a prophet, or your pastor, a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom or a word of prophecy for you, it shall come to pass. It must be from God. And I pray you are not in the church where there are false prophets and false teachers and, and, and false shepherds. So I, 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 just raise your hand and just speak in your heavenly language the gift of the Spirit. Krase krianda hakra yesi kriasa yedi didisian. Naze we zizikizian zaye didisia. Zaye zizikizian zaye we zizikizian. Krase krianda hakra yesi kriasa yedi didisia. I krase krianda hakra yesi kriasa yedi didisia. Zaye we zizikizi an zaye didisia krase krianda hakra yesi kria makre i krianda hakra ye nakre i sianda hakra yesi krianda hakra ye zaye we zizikizi an zaye didisia zaye didisia I want you to understand that God brings us out and into perfection, into maturity, taking us from dead works to good works. And dead works is works of sin, works of unrighteousness. And God shifts us. He, 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 he transforms our minds so that we can hear and obey. He transforms our mind so we will be fruitful and active in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the apostles teach us that when we are fruitful and active, we should not sin. We will not fall. That means we will not sin. When we're fruitful and active in his knowledge. And you can think about that, the times you sin. Are you walking by the word of God? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this word today. We thank you for this message on Holy Ghost tongues, power, edification, prayer, Holy Ghost supplication. I pray that it has enriched the lives of your people and that they understand the importance of the gift of diverse kinds of tongues. And so we must move in the Spirit, I and mean, we must walk in the Spirit, and we must be edified in the Spirit. And Father, I pray that every believer prays, because prayer is a part of our spiritual warfare. And then when we don't understand what to pray or how to pray, your Spirit prays for us and prays your will for us. So we must make time to pray and have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord, and be glorified. And thank you for not only teaching us to pray, but responding to our prayers. We thank you and we bless you. We glorify you and we magnify your name. We thank you, Lord, for teaching us how to pray, teaching us to intercede 
in supplication and prayer. And Father, we just thank you that you respond. And forgive us for when our prayers stink in your nostrils. Forgive us our sins when our prayers are a stench in your nose. So have your way, Lord, in all of our lives. Continue to perfect us, mature us, bring us into full age so that we can discern, which is another gift of the Spirit beyond our natural ability. So have your way, Lord, as we yield to your Spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you for removing blinders tonight, God. Thank you for filling the vessels. Thank you for the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge tonight. Thank you for showing us that the gifts are to profit every man and every woman to profit all because you show us in your word when it's not going to be a profit for certain things and when it will profit all of us and having gifts of the spirit is to profit everybody and when we are edified by the spirit of God by your spirit almighty God then we can Help others that they may profit also. Have your way, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, the mighty God, El Shaddai, the Prince of Peace, Jehovah Shalom, and Yah, Yahweh. Thank you for visiting us right in the clouds by your name. Have your way, Lord, and be glorified. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Be glorified in Jesus Christ's name, the potentate king, the everlasting father, alpha and omega. Amen and amen. Peace and blessings in and through the Holy Ghost, God's Spirit, leading us in eternal life and in Christ's full stature. This is your Chief Apostle Reddick, Executive Pastor, Spiritual Mother, and Master Apostle of Converting Souls Apostolic Ministries.